As a poultry farmer, you may be concerned about how to make more profit from your poultry farm. But that is almost impossible when your chickens are not heavy enough or not laying enough eggs. If your broiler chickens are not gaining enough weight and your layer chickens are not laying enough eggs, then you need to watch this video to the end to learn how to solve that problem. Today, I have invited a poultry farming expert who is going to show you exactly how your poultry farming business can become more profitable. Meet Mr. Opeyemi Samuel, a seasoned poultry farmer with close to 20 years of experience in poultry farming. He is a successful graduate animal scientist and organic poultry farmer. He has helped improve the farming experience of thousands of poultry farmers in Nigeria and across the world through his educative videos on YouTube and one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. He is crushing his goal of becoming a top resource person when it comes to teaching people how to practice poultry farming coaching at least 1,000 farmers every year since 2019. As a result of his great achievement in the poultry farming industry, many people often refer to him as the number one poultry success partner. In addition to his knack for teaching sustainable agriculture in its basic form, he is also a prolific writer and a tech enthusiast. Now brace yourself as we delve into this ultimate broiler and layer chicken production guide for maximum profit with your number one poultry success partner, Mr. Obeyemi Samuel. Don't forget to like this video and share it across all social media platforms so that we can reach as many people as possible. Now, without further ado, let's get into the class. Three, two, one, go. Hello and welcome. My name is Opoemi Afelui. I'm an animal scientist and poultry consultant. For close to two decades now, I've handled both great and small poultry projects. I've helped a few diasporians start their poultry farm from buying of the land as land purchase to getting into full operation. My first consultancy gig back then paid me about 500,000 naira and I'm proud to be one of the people who still tell you in Nigeria today that poultry farming is a profitable business. But I didn't just start from there. I could trace my passion for poultry farming back to primary school when my mom got me my first chicken. It was just one chicken and you know I took care of it and I loved it. Since then the passion grew and I would save up money to buy two to five chicks and I would raise them. I remember vividly when I was in secondary school and I got about 30 broilers. But before I knew what was going on, I lost all of them except one. Just like some of you today, I thought I was doing everything right but then I was also curious as to why these chicks died. That curiosity and self-awareness led me to study animal science at the university. And here am I today practicing poultry farming for close to to two decades now. But I felt knowing what to do is not satisfying enough. I needed to reach out to people because there are those who have the money but don't have the technical know-how. They don't have the knowledge to help them raise birds successfully. So my mission is to help bridge that knowledge gap and help people succeed in poultry farming. And that was what brought about that slogan, poultry success partner. So over the next couple of minutes, we'll be talking about the ultimate broiler and layer chicken production tricks for maximum production. Even though we have just 20 something minutes to spend together, I'll make sure that what you learn from this session is worth more than the time you're sacrificing. All right, so let's get started. Starting with the broiler tricks for maximum profit. Broilers are those chickens that are raised for meat. They are meaty and they grow to slaughter weight in a short period of time. All right, so what is the primary goal or what are the primary goals of the broiler farmer? One, the broiler farmer wants the broiler chicken to attain market weight in the shortest period of time. That is, if you tell the farmer that, oh, it's possible for your birds to reach the weight of 3 kg in just 4 weeks, the broiler farmer will be happy. So that's one goal. They want the broiler chicken to reach its market weight in the shortest period of time. And over the years, we've seen improvement in the breeds of the broiler chicken. And we've experienced the time interval it takes for the broiler to grow from the chick stage to the slaughter weight to be closing up gradually. So currently, at five weeks, the broiler chicken can reach anything from 2.2 to as high as 3 kg in live weight. And the second goal of the broiler farmer is to ensure that the birds are healthy. Because if the birds are not healthy, then they will not even achieve the first goal, which is fast growth. The broiler farmer wants the birds to be healthy and also to grow real fast. So to achieve these goals, there are five things we are going to be talking about 
if you can master this then i can guarantee you that you become a better broiler farmer okay so i've written down here first is breed selection we have a couple of breeds available to us in nigeria we have the rosterio 8 we have the cob 500 we have the aboyka we have the strains of aboyka to be aboyka plus aboyka plus 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 let's just call it aboyka and then we have the Mashao. yeah those are the four most common breeds in nigeria Okay, and I tell you, depending on what you want to do, there is a right and perfect breed for you. Depending on your location, on whether it is hot in your area, maybe you are living in the north, or it is cooler in your region, or you want to raise them for just five weeks, or you want to raise them for three months, you know, there is a right breed for you. All right, so it is important that you select a good breed from a good archery. We have a couple of reputable archeries in Nigeria, although there is this problem of standards. Most of them are not able to maintain quality consistently because at times they have challenges, but then you just have to keep your ears on the ground so that you can know what is happening in the industry. Getting poor cheeks from any archery will result in problems during the rearing period. Poor quality cheeks may not last more than two weeks on your farm before they eventually die and some of them will survive but then they don't convert feed as they should all right so it could be a problem of breeding it could be a problem of disease on the archery farm all right so you need to select good quality chicks to rear we also talk about feed choice yes when we say that the brother is able to convert feed and reach the market weight at five weeks or six weeks it all boils down to good feed and feeding. So you need to select the right feed for the kind of practice that you want to do. There's a philosophy that I have that when you want to raise your birds for five weeks, there's a particular feed you should use. And when you want to raise them for three months, there's a class of feed that you should use. So this is very key. Bullers are expected to hit the starter and the finisher diet. Usually the starter now is split into two. We have the super starter and we have the starter or we have the extra starter and the starter depending on the company they give it names all right so your brothers should eat they should start with the super starter then they graduate to starter and finally they eat finisher how long you use each of these feed class depends on how long you want the birds to last on your farm. Another thing is brooding management technique. Brooding is all the care that you give to that day old chick from that tender head to the point where it can actually control its body temperature. So we consider that period to last for about seven to in some cases 14 days and how you take care of your broiler chicken during brooding will determine what you get in the end. I tell you, during brooding is when the broilers have the best conversion ratio. That is, if you give them food, the meat that they will generate from that food is usually more when they are younger than when they are older. So if you take advantage of that when they are so small, in the first two, three weeks, then you get the benefit when they are older. So it's important that you actually take good care of their chicks when they are young let them have ad lip feeding that is feed them 24 7 give them extra light in the night you have to plan a way of giving them light 24 7 and also they should not run out of water at any point in time and the feed the fish should be of high quality the super starter should be anything between 22 and 23 percent protein that's very necessary and then number four number four number four key to achieving those goals the goal of weight and the goal of health the number four key is tracking your progress against the expected weight beginning from the day old you are expected to check the weight of the chicks so that you know whether they are converting the feed enough or they are not so you check on day one when they arrive on your farm then you check on day seven you should check on day 14 day 21 every week you keep checking the weight and you should have a chart that shows you the expected weight per week. That's based on the breed of broiler you have on your farm. You should have a chart that shows the expected weight per week. So you check what you're getting your results against that expected weight. If you are meeting target or you are even shooting above the target, you give yourself a thumbs up. If you are not reaching the target, you know there's more work for you to do. If you don't do this, then you may not know that your birds are not performing well until week four 
when it is almost too late to correct the things that are happening. So this is why it's important to check along the way. All right, so number five is disease management and this is very key. And one way to actually address or approach disease management is timely intervention. A lot of farmers don't know, they don't, maybe they don't have the eye for detail, I don't know. They don't know when the chicks are sick, they don't know the signs, you know, and this is one thing that you should learn. Try as much as possible to learn it because it is when you know what is wrong that you'll be able to approach it and correct it. So you should know when they have coccidiosis, when they are passing out brownish or reddish poop, bloodstained poop actually, or when they have uh, CRD, chronic respiratory disease, and they are breathing like they're having labored breathing, they, some of them may be sneezing, you know, all those things. And when they are passing out greenish pool that is related to uh, starving or the one related to Newcastle disease, you should understand all these things as it will help you to intervene in time. So a quick rundown of the points that will help you to achieve those two goals, the goal of weight and the goal of health. A quick rundown, breed selection, the feed choice, brooding management technique, tracking your progress against the expected weight, and finally, disease management. Yeah, that's where we are going to be stopping for broilers. But just as I've said earlier, I'm in the business of breaching the knowledge gap. And for that reason, I've actually made a broiler course, a broiler masterclass. I call it Raising Broilers Like a Pro. If you want to know, you want to embody the skills that will help you succeed in broiler farming anytime any day i have a video course that will teach you i actually did the course with a batch of broilers so i'll teach you from day old to maturity everything you need to do you see things you hear more than you can get from this session i believe you got something interesting from this session already this is just a tip of the iceberg so you're going to get a lot more in that training if you enroll in that masterclass and i'll be giving you a huge discount it's just available for those who are part of this session actually the discount has never been given to anybody before i'm going to be giving you a huge discount at the end of this session so just know that you're going to get at least 50 percent cut in price all right so let's move on to the layer aspect so layer tricks for maximum profit and what are the goals of a layer farmer? They are primarily raised for the eggs that they produce because they are proven to be good egg layer. So the female that are called ends are actually used for this purpose. So the goal of a layer farmer are also to, to get more eggs. Yeah, ask any layer farmer, they always want more. Even when the birds are laying at 90% or 92%, they always want more because who doesn't want more? All right, so that's the first goal. And the second goal is to also keep them healthy because if they are not healthy, it's going to affect everything you are doing on your farm. And layers are even more sensitive to things happening around them. And it's very important that you take note of everything and also do them some good so that they can pay you back with lots of eggs. All right, so I also have here five key things that you need to do to be able to achieve those two goals, the goal of more eggs and the goal of health sound health all right so the first is also breed quality and potential yeah two things now you need to understand the breed of layers you are getting whether it is the isa brown whether it is the lowman brown whether it is the bovans nera you know you need to understand their capacity how many eggs can they lay in a year if i'm to take them then how is their survival in this region where i am do they survive well in cold do they survive in hot period you know you need to study those things and then decide on the archery you will go with that has that breed that you want maybe you have decided to go with the lowman brown then you look at the likes of aggregated they have lowman brown if you have decided to go with the isa brown you look at the likes of chi they have isa brown layer so like that you consider first the breed you want to choose why are you selecting it is it a good egg layer and will it survive well in your area because don't forget we are also considering health alongside the eggs we are considering health so if they will not survive well in your area just like some cows are good milk machines like the hostian frisian yeah that's the name of that breed of cattle that is good in producing milk one cow can give you 
20 liters of milk a day but then they are not good with the tropical regions these are the regions with high temperature like nigeria they are good with temperate regions where there is enough cold yeah so the same applies to chickens there are some chickens that do well in hot period and there are some that don't do well in hot periods or climate then after you have sorted that out you have to consider whether you are going for the day old option or the point of lay yeah it's a huge debate but i'm going to tell you simply here that if you are going to be doing day hold and you know you want to use cage system of rearing where you have them in battery cages it will mean that you have two houses one to brood them from day old to maturity and the cages to set them for laying but if you are going to be leaving them on the deep litter that means you can just have one house and do everything there all right, that's one about the day old but then if you are going to be taking the point of lay you need just one house where you install the cages one of the advantages of raising the day old by yourself is that you'll be able to know exactly what you have put the birds through through their through their first 14 16 weeks of life so you understand their history and you also be sure of the vaccinations that you have done if you have done everything well you'll know if you have not done everything well, you know. You know their history. You know every disease that, that has happened and you know if they have battled it well. All those things you have in your database. But if you are buying the point of lay, you don't understand their history. And not all farmers will be truthful. And for those who would like to go for the point of lay, one of the advantages is that in no time, you have your return on the investment. That is, they just begin to lay after about two weeks or three weeks arriving on your farm, they begin to lay. You don't have to wait for four or five months before you start seeing eggs, you know. It can be tiring just raising the chicks, they go through some challenges, you know, some will die, you know, all those things. And some people don't want to go through the process of raising the day old chicks because they don't know how to. So to you that you are watching right now, I encourage you to know everything that you need to know. You need to learn how to raise the day old. It's not so complicated and I'm here to solve all those problems for you. All right. So uh, another thing now you think about is care for the day old chicks or the point of lay you need to care for them whichever one you choose so for the day old you have to follow their vaccination charts however when they are sick you don't vaccinate them that is very important you don't vaccinate any sick bed don't say ah because it's in the chart that yeah on this day we have to vaccinate no you don't vaccinate a sick chicken it's okay to skip the vaccine for a few days just make sure the birds recover before you vaccinate so in caring for them you have to in on the feeding part you it's good to boost them with for about two weeks with brella starter then you feed them with the chicks mash which is of lesser protein and then at the age of seven or eight weeks you start giving them grower mash it is that grower mash or pellet grower mash or pellets Marsh is just a form. Pellet is another form. Grower is grower. And it is that grower that they will eat until they start laying about 5% production. 5% is if you have, say, 100 hens in the house, that means you have seen 5 eggs per day. When you start to see 5 eggs per day, you can now change to layer marsh. Layer marsh is what they will eat till they are done laying. And a good egg layer is expected to lay for at least 18 months that is one and a half years and if it is point of lay that you got on your farm once they arrive your farm you need to screen them for any disease that may be in their system you need to treat them and you need to acclimatize them this is one of the reasons why i encourage farmers to get about 14 weeks old don't get about 16 17 weeks because at that age they are already trying to form eggs so get about 14 weeks so they arrive at your farm and in one week you have given them necessary medications. They are used to the cage. Maybe they were on deep litter before. They are getting used to the cage in one week or there about. You know, all those stress is coming down before they proceed to forming eggs and then laying. All right, the fourth point here, the fourth point is meeting the requirement for every growth stage, for all the growth stages. You know, I've mentioned the point where you give them the umbrella starter for two weeks all those things you need to meet it if you don't meet those requirements it is very critical to their development and their performance later when they start to lay so endeavor to give them quality feed and give them the right quantity per time make sure they are eating the right quantity 
there is usually a chart that you can see what gram of feed that the layer chick should eat a day when they are growing per week there is that required quantity but when they start to lay it ranges from 110 to maximum of about 120 some crazy eaters especially in cold seasons can hit up to 125 but it's rare you usually the average is 115 grams per day for each end so all those things you should know and you can always get a chart for that and lastly for you to achieve that goal of more eggs and health during the time when the hens are already laying that they are fully considered as layers during that time there are some things that you should do a lot of things that you should do the list goes on and on but i'm going to share with you two things here two secrets yeah and one of it is lighting there's a particular amount of day length that the end needs to be exposed to to be able to lay as much as it has the ability to lay i don't know if you are getting me if your end is able to lay 300 and 15 eggs in a year if you don't give it sufficient light it may not lay up to that so it doesn't mean that that end does not have the potential but you are not maximizing the potential all right because the process of egg formation actually requires light light stimulates the formation of egg i won't say more than that so that i don't go into some jargons all right so it is important that they are exposed to a certain number of hours of day light all right and generally you know we have about 12 hours day and 12 hours dark and when your hands reach the production of about 50 percent they should be exposed to about 16 hours or even 16 and a half hours day length that is you have to supplement the regular day length that we have that's 12 hours you need about four or four and a half hours extra oh this is a huge secret i've had somebody who contacted me was having about 2000 plus ends and the person had gone to vet vet had given drugs and all that he called me i was even driving on this day but he got lucky i was using my airport and i just asked him a few questions and before long i got to the point i asked if he was giving them supplemental light he said no is that necessary so i told him it's going to be like magic that you should just start giving them one hour extra light you should start from one hour extra that's 13 you should make it gradual okay so and he did that and the next time he called me was like wow 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 the pollution has improved so it is automatic because this is a systemic issue it affects the production directly because light influences the process of egg formation so let me just paint a picture let's say the egg is forming and it's supposed to continue forming and then it turns dark be about 7 pm in the night it's going to pause until it's going to pause until there is enough light again for it to continue so the longer you allow them to wait and expect light the more you have to wait for eggs too but then you have to take note that you should not exceed that 16 and a half hours of daylight otherwise you will stress them and they will go into molting molting is the period when the the hen wants to stop laying and at that time it's also losing its feathers so they will become naked yeah you don't want that to happen to your bird so don't overshoot on this and wait until they reach 50 percent production before you make it up to 16 or 16 hours you can make it gradual you know at a point you can be 13 you can be 13 and a half you can be you can be doing it on a weekly basis just adding 30 30 minutes no, that, and that should happen after they have already started laying you should not add anything until they start laying i have all this breakdown i have everything in place don't worry i'm going to share with you how to get it all right so and the second secret i want to share with you under that layer management which is the fifth point the second secret i want to share with you is stress a lot of people don't understand this secret they just do anything around their ends and they believe it will not impact their egg production they notice that eggs are going down the number of eggs are going down but then it doesn't occur to them that they are the ones causing it sometimes you call your carpenter to come and walk around your pen and they're just eating everywhere blah, 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 blah. how will you build a structure that will require you to continue to work on it all the time no you should do this between batches when you take out a flock before you bring out the next one do all your renovation if at all you want to do any work in the pen make sure the disturbance is minimal you got me so layers are very sensitive to stress and anything at all can stress them it could be the weather 
if the weather is too hot it stresses them you need to add maybe ice block in their water you, need, you see people put on fans just to cool the house anything you can do to give them comfort zone a comfort zone is that is a zone of existence where the animal does not have to do anything at all to feel okay the animal is just okay just like human beings sometimes we put on a fan just to be okay sometimes we take um and fan I will start blowing ourselves that is not comfort zone in a comfort zone you don't have to do anything apart from living your life you don't have to do anything to feel okay so as you are like this you are okay you are feeling like AC is blowing you yeah maybe people have already installed the AC in place for you you should not do it yourself that is comfort zone and that is the zone you have to place your ends if you want them to lay very well for you so feed change can also stress them if you change from this manufacturer to another manufacturer, it can stress them. All these things can stress your hands. Another secret is color. Even color can stress your hands. And that is why you should not use anything too bright as your overall when you're entering the pen. Anything bright in the chicken house should just be maybe the nipple drinker, something that will attract them to come and drink water. But if you are if you are walking around the pen with red, yellow, you know, it's not so good because it's bright and causes distraction. All of them will focus on you. And once one of them makes that noise of curiosity, all of them will start making it. And all over the house, they will think, even the ones at the far distance, they won't even know what is happening. Once they just hear that sound of curiosity, they will make noise. And some of them will even start jumping in the cage. And that will affect your egg production how do i know that stress affect egg production and this is where i'll be closing it so i performed an experiment i had this chicken i usually uh i could check when they are about to lay i put this smallest finger inside their vent to check if the egg is so close so i could tell at that point that the hen was to lay in about 30 minutes time 30 minutes to that time so i took the hen and placed it in a cage with two mature cockerels so what did they do they started mating with the hen they were stressing the hen i tell you the hen did not lay that egg until the following day did you get that the hen was to lay the egg within 30 minutes let's even say maximum one hour i placed the hen in the cage with two cockerels they were climbing and mating her she did not lay that egg until the next day that is to tell you that anything that stresses your hen will delay the eggs from coming. The egg may be close to the vent. You will not go around and start fingering all your ends, no. So the eggs may be close to the vent and you brought in your carpenter or you, a snake just crawls in or a bird enters the chicken house and stresses the all of them. It may delay that egg for another four hours and your customers are already waiting to get their eggs. You're not going to get as much eggs on that day. So anything that will stress your ends at all, avoid it and you get good production. So a quick rundown on these keys to achieving those two goals, the goal of egg and the goal of health. So the first key is the breed quality and potential of that breed you are considering. Then we moved on to second one, day old versus POL point of lay. And the third, care for the day old chick and the point of lay, whichever one you choose. And then... Number four, meeting the requirement for all the growth stages of your end. And then the layer management where I shared the secret of lighting and stress. I tell you, I am actually what I say I am. I'm an animal scientist. I'm a poultry success partner. And one of the things I've tried to do is to put an archive where people can just come to and learn what they need at any time they want. All right, so for this layer aspect, I also have the egg production masterclass, how you can make layers turn you into a millionaire. I have that course, and a lot of people have actually taken that course. I have lots and lots of five-star reviews, wonderful reviews that you want to see. Maybe I'll just share a few of them on the screen for you to see. I have that masterclass ready for you. And for that also, I'm going to be giving you a crazy discount. Yeah, at least 50% discount. On that so I'm um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sharing a special link to those two courses for you just try and locate the links and get into the course 
For the brother aspect, you are going to thank me forever. For the layer aspect, you are going to want to give me all your eggs someday. Yeah, I'm joking. But I tell you, it's exactly what I call it. It's awesome. It's fantastic. The two courses, once you take them, you are sure to beat the next broiler farmer close to you. If you take the layer course, you are sure to beat the next layer farmer close to you. It doesn't matter how long they have stayed in the business. Everything I've learned in poultry farming, I've had to do the work. I've had to put in the effort. I've had to go to school for it. I've had to run experiments on my own. I've had to work with farms. You know, I've had to consult with people and share experiences. But I don't want you to go through all this stress. That's why I'm putting everything together. So it's all in one place for you. And I'm also giving you a one-time massive discount. This discount is just going to be available for a week. Yeah, for a week. And if you claim it, you are the lucky one. All right, so this is where we'll be rolling the cutting. I believe we'll have the question and answer session. And I'm always happy to answer your questions. So just bring them all. Uh, thank you for your time and I hope I see you in class. All right, let's have the questions.